looking off at the horizon, there is a massive school of sardines on the surface. We're going to drive up to them. When you drive up to them, try not to go through the middle. I'm going to go through the middle so you guys can see them. But, you know, if there's other guys on the bait spot, be courteous and don't spook the bait and drive right through the middle. Go on the outskirts of the bait fish. But I'm going right through the middle so everyone can see these baits flipping around and see them on the surface and what it kind of looks like. It almost looks like it's starting to rain. It's just a different texture in the water column. And when you go through that and you look at your machine, it'll look something like that. And those guys are already spooked. So they're not, they're not up high in the water column. They're about 25 feet down there, a little lower. But as they get happy again, because the boat goes away from them, they will rise back up and you'll slowly see them getting higher and higher on the machine like they are right now. So now you know they're right under the boat and they're gonna be happy and it's gonna be easy to catch them. All right guys, I say it all the time, bait fishing is the most important part of the day, especially for me when I'm doing chartering and commercial fishing. It's really important to know how to locate baits and how to catch them You really want to know how to catch each species of bait the most efficient way as possible. And right now I got, I'll show you. Nope. Right now I've got a number four, Tsunami Fluorocarbon Sabiki. And I'm targeting sardines. So with this Fluorocarbon Sabiki, I'm really just uh, matching the hatch. Whatever they're eating, whatever size their mouths are, is really the way you want to fish them. For something bigger like Godzilla, you use something a little bit, a little bit larger, and they have quills made just for those. But in this specific situation, using a number four fluorocarbon sabiki. And when you're locating bait on structure, most of the time. If the current's going the right direction, which the Gulf Stream runs north, those baits are always going to be on the southern side of the structure. They like to get up current, and when they're happy, they like to rise up in the water column. I don't know if you've ever seen that on the front side of a wreck or any kind of rock pile, but typically that's where, that's where the bait's going to hang out. So as you can see, north is facing up on my GPS, and the spot where we're at you can see I was clearly on the south side of the spot. And those are the circles I did chasing the baits around. So those baits are hanging just to the south, just to the south. And they like to be up current. So like I said earlier, they love to be up current from spots. So always search around. Now, if the current is coming out of the north, it's a weird phenomenon when it happens here or we have a swell. But if it's coming the opposite direction as the Gulf Stream normally runs, I will check on the north side of the rock. Instead of the south, the north. So just keep that in mind. If the conditions are a little different, you notice you're actually drifting a different direction, it's worth a try. Right now, we're just kind of putting around. And I'm kind of just scanning my bottom machine. Oh, and there's the bait. So as you can see, we're marking bait nice and high, and we're a little in front of the rock pile, maybe a little to the south. So, so what we'll do is, once we get these baits to start marking real good, actually I can see them on the surface. That's the best part is when you can actually see them on the surface. See him flipping on the south end of that rock pile or wreck or whatever structure you're fishing on. You see him flipping on the surface, you know that it's going to be a, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good bite. But they're just flipping right here, and it's it, it's important to use the right size lead. Oh, they hit it on the way down. A lot of the time they'll hit it on the way down. And if you're not expecting them to hit it on the way down they will tangle up your speaky because they'll swim up it. And uh, there we go, I got a two piece of sardines. 
and when you're when you're de hooking these guys, um, have your hands slightly wet and be very gentle with them. Try not to squeeze them and knock their scales off. When you knock their scales off, it takes away from their life, and it, it you'll see it'll scar them up and they'll start dying a lot quicker than they normally would. All right, the school moved. So when your bottom machine gets empty, you know that those baits are gone. So just kind of be aware, scan around you, say, all right, I don't see them under my boat. Maybe they're somewhere else. Most of the time, now most of the time, they're not far off. Like right there. Like we didn't go, we didn't go very far. I just did a quick circle and I'm back in them. And that's what we're looking for is just to get back in them and with repetition you will fill your live well all right so i'm back in them i see them behind the boat we're all around the boat so just kind of let it sink down whatever level in the water column that you are marking them on your machine is where you want to focus so what I'm saying is if those baits are on the bottom, focus your rig on the bottom. But if those baits are nice and high, 10 feet under your boat, keep it 10 feet under your boat. And what happened here was they actually swam my, uh, my sabiki sinker up. And I'm using a three ounce for this, but they still, you'll hook one of those big old strong horse sardines and they'll, they'll swim it up. They'll just swim straight up. Look, they're already biting. Stringing. So yeah, I mean, they're strong little bait fish, but a lot of time I can do a double sabiki, and I'll get twice as many. But then you got to use super heavy weight. String them, Jerry. String them. Oh, string cheese. And that's how it's done. All right, so now I'm kind of marking them toward the bottom. So I'm gonna drop it all over the bottom and there they are. And one of the things about catching them on sabiki is be very gentle, don't pull real hard. These are small hooks, they're the size of, you know, a freshwater dry fly hook. They're super small and you don't want to pull those baits off. But at the same time, you want their buddies to jump on the sabiki rig with them. Next to the boat, so they're getting ready to come under the boat. Oh, there they are, five feet under the boat. That's the best. You don't have to drop it to the bottom, they're just right there, stringing. And I'm just kind of taking it easy and just letting them fight. Flip them in, get them off these ribs as quickly as possible while being as gentle as possible. And that's the key is gentle. A lot of guys use a sabiki e hooker. That works. I've got a couple. It's like a little mini hook. A little stick. Let's see if I can find you one to show you guys. It's this guy right here. It's just a little uh you use gravity, you get a hold of the hook and you hold it upside down. Alright, I'm gonna show you guys how that D hooker works. Alright, I'm marking them like halfway down, a little bit under the boat. Let's see if I can get a couple to show you. There's days where it's tricky and there's days where it's very easy. Right now they're biting pretty good. As the predators show up, like bonitas and Spanish mackerel, kingfish, all those things that eat them, it gets a lot more difficult because the bait gets smarter. Now, this is a BKD hooker. All you really do is turn that hook upside down. You just hold it in the line and turn the hook and you put the other end. Turning the hook upside down and that way you don't ever have to touch the bait. And they live a little better that way. Bonking them on the deck doesn't help either. But just a little something to show you guys.
so with this bait fishing I use pretty light mono this is 15 pounds because I like the stretch I'm using a Cortez rod which is seven foot but it's a medium I like that super soft tip because when those little baits hit you want it to flex you want that little bit of give so that uh, they don't they don't pull off the hooks I got a pretty low gear ratio reel. It's a Cortez reel. All right. That's a bleeder. He's bleeding up. You can keep him, you can throw him in the well, but this guy will not live. He's gonna be a dead one for later, or chum, or whatever you wanna do, but he won't make it. And the blue runners will take your up, oh, will take your hooks off. It just happened, because they're strong. They'll either take your hooks off or they'll bend these little hooks. And that's really not what you want. A lot of times you can avoid this. By not going to the bottom. And he broke my hook. Nice and easy. Oh, oh, I just got eaten by something. See, that's another problem is when you start getting eaten by predators, yeah, so I got my cigar minnow. My other three hooks are gone. So I had six hooks. Now, you can see these little knots. <laughs> now I got four hooks. Later in the day, it gets, the harder it is to catch live bait like this because the predators move into these spots where the baits hold. And when they do that, it makes them more spooky and it makes them hang out at the bottom more. So when they're happy, they're always up on top and fluttering, but when they get pressured by predators, they'll push to the bottom and you'll see that on your bottom machine. And that's just kind of like a warning when you notice that, that you gotta pull them up quick and you can't really take your time. Oh, I got a fat cigar, man. Now as other boats show up and it gets later in the day, you'll notice it gets a lot tougher to really catch the amount of bait you want. So it's important to get an early start. That early start really ensures that you're going to catch the bait you need in time for the early morning bite you're trying to fish. Constantly jockeying to chase these baits around in circles because when boats move in, it pushes the baits. When, uh, when predators like bonitas and kingfish move in, it really pushes the baits around and makes it more difficult. There's some right there. It's a good solid mark of bait right there. Big old ball of them all the way up to the surface. And as you can see, they're out there flipping right in front of the boat. That's what we like to see. Here's my finished product. A well full of sardines and they are happy. Just running around. And as you can see, they look they look pretty fast still. You know, if they're running around and sucking air on the surface, you know that you need more, more water flow through there. You can see the holes in my deck below the baits. So I've got water coming in from below and I've got also a pump. Ooh, it's not running. Okay, so we we uh, we have a pump that isn't working. <laughs> we had a pump. 
right now it is not working so that's that's not good you know it's just gonna say we need a pump go figure all right some on the water repairs I got that water flowing again this is my backup pump uh, I literally had no terminals or anything to work with out here but I twisted them together and that'll get me through today's trip and that will keep my baits alive for the day Woo! they almost died almost died that brings me to another conclusion always have a good live well pump and always have a backup pump if you're really serious about going fishing 